Hi, thank you for having me be one of your TED speakers at the NABI meeting in Boston. My name is Diane Darling. I was the last speaker that day. I'm the one who moved up and down the aisle. It's a trick I use to keep me connected to the audience, since my biggest competitor these days is your smartphone. The topic I was asked to speak about was team building. I offered that day to send the slides and then I thought, I'm going to test something. What if I do a recording of the slides and send that instead? Of course, the 10 minute TED talk turned into a big project, but now I've learned how to film slides and edit both video and audio. Who knew? And a very special shout out to Whitney who invited me to speak that day. We actually meant sharing a taxi, but that's a networking story. So here's a quick bio. I'm an accidental entrepreneur. I started several businesses and nonprofits. Some have succeeded, others not. I am very lucky to have traveled around the world starting at the age of six when our family moved to the Philippines. In my 20s, I was a tour leader and took Americans all around the world, which was an incredible experience. Now I'm a speaker sharing insights and observations with audiences like you. I really hope my information will be useful and help you succeed. The Wall Street Journal, San Francisco Chronicle, Herald Tribune, MSNBC, and of course the American Bar Association are some of the media outlets that have covered my work or where I've been published. The photo in the corner was taken in 2003 at the finish line of the Boston Marathon. It's the day my first book was published. So I popped out and got a photo since I truly felt like I'd finished a marathon. Except for the truth is, I only run when I'm late for a plane. Here are images of my books in several languages. Portuguese is in the upper left. Japanese is below. The bright blue in the middle is Korean. The orange is Taiwanese. The golden is Thai, which is especially fun since I went to high school for a bit in Bangkok. The pink is Chinese and the bottom right is Indonesian. It's just very bizarre when you write a book, but you can't read it. Okay, now let's talk about team building. Let's first talk about the purpose of your team. Why are you building a team in the first place? I'm dyslexic, so I look at things backwards. I start with the end in mind. If I don't know where I want to end up, I might put together the wrong team. Look at this image of the FedEx logo. You've seen it many times before. What you may have not seen is the hidden arrow Take a moment and see if you can find it. Here's a hint. It's between the E and the X in the white space. Your team may have hidden issues or hidden agendas. Get them out first. Define the purpose of your team. So when you're putting a team together for membership, planning an event, discuss where you want the team to go and what it will look like when you get there at the end. These days, there are extensive conversations about leadership, and there's no doubt we need good leadership in organizations, but there's also a time to be a good follower. As you're putting your team together, be sure there are people who balance each other out. If there are too many leaders, it can get pretty chaotic fast. Sometimes people look in the mirror and they see a leader, but not everybody shares that. Maybe you need to suggest to a leader it's time for them to mentor and champion a rising star. Help them share their leadership skills and build the pipeline. I love being a leader. I also really love being a follower. Leadership is exhausting. I test as an introvert, which often confuses people. I like people, and for the most part, they like me. But I get exhausted with too much people time. So I like following, not having to make every decision, letting someone else do the research, put together the plan, and get the project done. I also feel it's very important for leaders to role model that they know when to step back and follow. Defining respect isn't easy, but the cost of disrespect is huge. I'm an optimist. I don't think people intentionally want to be disrespectful. I do think it often happens when we say something quickly and our lips move faster than our brains. A perfect example is when our fingers replace our lips and we send an email that runs amok. 
This chart is from some research done at UCLA. It's often debated and the numbers are disputed, but I believe it's worth a look. There are three essential elements of communication. Words, body language, voice or tone. When we are in person, we have 100% of our communication power. That is what we had when I was speaking at the conference. Now you're only getting the words plus voice slash tone, the blue. The red is the body language. It's missing right now. You can't see me moving around the room, whether I'm talking near you, or if you're looking at your phone and you'd rather be it, or if you're looking at your phone and you'd rather pay it, or if you're looking at your phone rather than paying attention to my talk. Just kidding? Right. The blue is the voice in the tone. What do I mean by tone? Here's an example. I was doing a phone interview for a job when I was home one, home one summer from college. My mother slipped me a note and said, Honey, I know who you are, but do you know who you are? When we got off the phone, I said, Mom, what's that about? She explained to me that I said, Hi, I'm Diane Darling. She said my voice should fall. For example, Hi, I'm Diane Darling. Don't say, I'd like to work for you. Instead, say, I'd like to work for you. The yellow piece of the pie represents our words, and that's often where disrespect happens. When we're sending an email, we forfeit 93% of our communication. Wow, 93% of our communication power is gone. So the other person can only look at the words to determine if we're happy, sad, angry, joking. I've been testing some webinar tools so that I can produce these videos. The website for one was full of typos and I just thought that was so odd. So I sent a note with a screenshot saying, FYI, you got some typos. I got a note back from the guy saying, the typos are intentional and it worked for marketing. I wrote back what I thought was a pithy note commenting that I wasn't sure if I should trust their software if their marketing had typos. The guy wrote back and said, that's a bit extreme. So I had to write back and say, I'm joking, I'm joking, which was true. I was also curious about the process. On a separate note, I also teach a class on business and email writing. I'm happy to fill, fill you in if that's something that would be of interest, but never, ever, ever, ever say something in email that you would not say to someone's face, even Rodney's. It's a fact of life that we like to group people and say if they think a certain way. A frequent grouping is by gender, and this slide captures that, albeit in a bit of a humorous way. Basically, it says that women are complicated and want a few more options than men. Men just want to know if it will work, and they're done. Yeah, it's meant to make you laugh, but be wary in your organization of group think. If your organization is specifically about women, for example, be mindful that not all women think alike. Yes, indeed, that is Dr. Ruth. I met her by accident at a conference when I put my bag over my shoulder and I hit somebody. I turned around to apologize and I had hit Dr. Ruth. Part of my point with this example is the importance of recovering from a mistake. I was embarrassed and horrified. I mean, my gosh, I had just hit Dr. Ruth. I also had a brain burp. Would she give me 15 minutes of time to learn about her career path? Within a few weeks, we were in New York, meeting at a cafe, enjoying a cup of coffee, and she was telling me amazing stories. And yes, I'm only five foot four. It's easy to be enthusiastic, passionate, and positive that your well-thought-out plan is going to work. There's something counterintuitive about a plan B, as if you don't want to jinx plan A. I've learned this the hard way. A plan B doesn't mean you're doubting plan A. It does mean that you've thought through your plan and it's strategic. This increases the chances of plan A working and it significantly reduces your stress level. Why don't some teams work? What are the barriers to discuss? The one thing that Oprah, the Dalai Lama, Warren Buffett and I have in common is 24 hours in a day. 
we all have the same amount of time. Nothing can change that. In many cases, we are completely unrealistic about what we can get done in the time we allocate. It's true for everything from getting to the airport, stress-free, to learning how to create a video from slides. <laughs> create a timeline for your next project or initiative. Expectations, that's another barrier. Ever think that brochure or event will fix the membership retention issue? Be sure to identify clearly the expectations of the team. Money, it's the lifeblood for both profit and nonprofit organizations. Even if making money isn't your mission, you've got to cover your bills. Do you have enough funding for this team to succeed? Project creep. The project starts by putting golf balls in a jar and saying, the jar is full, it's done. Then someone says, there's room for a few pebbles. So you add a few pebbles. Then someone says, my project's really small and just like sand, you can add it to the jar. And then you think you're done. Then someone says, well, let me add this. It's transparent. And you add water into the jar. By defining your team's goals, you'll be able to say yes and you'll be able to do something more importantly that very few people or teams can. Say no. Say, I'm sorry, that's not something this, this team can add to its current project list. Just like football, we start on the 50 yard line. It takes players, strategy, initiative, funding, and just get it done attitude for teams to work. Start with the end in mind it's no secret what's the goal of a football game to win. So what is your goal? What do you want to achieve? Well, thank you again for your time, both at the event and as a part of this recording. Special shout out to the Houston Bar Association that ordered 5,000 of my little hints cards. If you want something along those lines or you want me to come as be your speaker, let either myself or Marcia know. You can reach her, Marcia, at bluefeathermanagement.com. She helps manage my business. I look forward to being your speaker at a future date. Please come back to Boston. You all brought beautiful weather. You're definitely invited back this winter. I hope to hear from you soon. Take good care, and thank you again so much.